Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Daniel Smith. I'm the vice president of the club. Um, I do quite a bit of astrophotography. Some of you might have been here um, last month. I kind of showed some basics of taking pictures with a DSLR. Um, I Daniel? Do, yes. Might tell people if they want to see your presentation better to use what we call speaker view up in the top right corner. Okay. Your yeah. Choices. So you're fine, but they may not all know that. Okay, right. um, but I, uh, I I do imaging, I do astrophotography. I started uh, probably about a year and a half ago. Um, I was just doing basic DSLR stuff, and then uh, um, now I'm imaging with a equatorial mount. I've got a couple of different telescopes I use and cold astronomy cameras and things. But um, today I'm just going to show you, because um, a lot of people don't know, they've heard about stacking astro photos, but they're not sure what that is or how you get started and you also might have heard of uh, something called calibration frames and uh, so tonight i'm just going to do a very basic overview of what that is using a program called deep sky stacker now deep sky stacker is a free program uh, you can just uh, google search it and you can download it uh, it's free to use it's uh, the one of the most basic stacking programs for astrography that you can get and it's fairly simple so um, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, sharing my screen here. <clears throat> All right. So um, this right here is um, what's uh, an astronomical object called M78. It's a dark nebula. Now what this is, is it is a single frame, um, just one picture. It's a, a two minute exposure taken with my um, um, Celestron 9.25 inch SCT and a uh, um, Hyperstar adapter. So I know it's kind of hard for you to see because, you know, zoom screens are a little bit, they're not the greatest. But anyways, you can see there's a little bit of uh, detail there. You can see the nebula um, kind of sort of. And I don't know if it helps if I zoom in, but you can see there's quite a bit of noise. Um, different bits of noise there, but that's a single frame. So we're gonna jump on over to Deep Sky Stacker. Now, ideally, you wanna take multiple exposures. You want to take, um, you know, as many exposures as you can for stacking them. Uh, so for now, what, I've, what I'm gonna show you here on this screen, I've got 10 of these frames. So that's two minutes a piece that basically would mean 20 minutes of total exposure time. So when you get this app or when you get this software, you, you open it up and you're gonna hit um, on the top left. I know it's, it's hard to see, um, but at the top left, it says open picture files and you're just gonna open your files in the program. If you're using a DSLR, it'll probably be raw files. If you're using an astro cam, it'll probably be what's called FITS files. But you just open your, your light frames and then it will load them all up. And you're going to want to check um, all of those frames. There's an option over there that says check all. Okay. And then um, what you're going to do is stack them. Now, um, what I'm going to do for now, I'm, just, I'm not going to use my uh, calibration frames, but. Um, if you go here, you're gonna to go to register and uh, then you're just gonna hit, if you use your recommended settings, that's fine. That's the thing, this thing, you, you can change all kinds of stuff. But if you just go with the recommended settings, most Daniel, of the time it turns out pretty good. Yes. All we're seeing is the one picture. Are you showing oh. settings and stuff? Hang on one second here. Let me switch this. <clears throat> Let me switch it over here. And this one, this one. Here we go. Sorry about that. All right, now you can see um, Deep Sky Stacker here. So you're just going to go in your open picture files and open your, your light frames. And um, then you want to make sure that you've checked all of them. And there's an option right over here that says check all on the left. Um, and um, you're going to go to register check pictures. And um, 
you can go in with these options here. I mean, if you just go with basically what it says, um, you don't even have to change a lot of the settings. You can go with this button here that says recommended settings, and it'll tell you what you should use for stacking. Um, and then you just hit OK, and it will register. Basically, what it does is it takes all your photos and, and aligns all the stars. Um, I'm going to stop that. And then you go over to stack check pictures. And you hit OK. And for 10 photos, uh, like I'm using right now, it really, I mean, if you've got a moderately decent computer, it really doesn't take too long. So it's stacking 10 photos. Daniel? Uh huh. Speak a little slower because we're getting some feedback. I don't know why, but thank you. Okay. So I've stacked 10 photos of uh, the Nebula M78. This is just an initial uh, look at it. And I did not use calibration frames, and I'm going to explain that here in a second. Okay. So I'm going to um, jump on over back to Pix Insight here. Remember, this was the single frame. All right. Now, here's 10 frames stacked. And I don't know if your resolution is good enough, but um, it definitely shows a noticeable difference. What I'll do is I'll come to this area here. So here's 10 frames stacked. And there's one frame. So you can see the brightness, you can see more nebulosity, and a lot of that noise has disappeared as well. Okay, now that's without calibration frames. What are calibration frames? Calibration frames consist of things called flat frames, dark frames, and um, some you can use what's called either dark flats or bias, but those two are basically the same. What flats do, is uh, uh, they help make the illumination. If you can tell in the corners of this photo, it's kind of dark in the corners here and a little bit brighter in the center because that's my, my optical system. That's what happens. So a flat frame will help even out that illumination. And then um, when you're using the dark frames and also the bias frames, that helps uh, cancel out um, some of those things such as artifacts and noise, um, it makes the noise a lot smoother. Because that's something when you're editing a photo is it's really hard to get a nice clean looking photo if you're having to deal with a bunch of noise, all right? So um, when you go in, when you're in uh, Deep Sky Stacker, you're going to um, do the same thing like you did with open picture files, except you're going to open on the left, on the upper left, there's dark files, flat files, and dark flat files. So the way that you take these calibration frames, a dark, a dark file, a dark uh, frame is basically, you're going to put the lens cap on your camera so that it takes zero light, and you want that to be the same um, ISO or gain of your camera. And you want to try to be around the same temperature. So, you know, if you're, it's good sometimes to take them out at night. Um, but you want it to be the same, all the same settings as your light. Flat files are taken where you use a, an illuminated, some sort of illumination. Some people like to use the morning sky and they just put a white t shirt over their optics. And so what that does is it just gets an even flat field illumination when you take the pictures. I use a what's called a LED tracing screen that I bought on Amazon for about 30 bucks. And it's just a white, it's just pure white light. And I point my telescope at that. And um, you want your flat frames to be just long enough where your, your uh, histogram is somewhere from a third to the middle showing um, on there. And then your dark flat files, similar to the other two, but with dark flats, what you're going to do is you're going to take and put your lens cap back on your camera. And you want the dark flat files to actually be the same exposure length as the flat files. Now, I understand that's a lot of information, but I'm just giving you the quick basics of what those are. 
And now I'm going to show you um, why those are important. I'm going to go back over to Pix Insight here. So we already looked at the first frame, one single frame. Okay. Then we looked at 10 stacked frames. Now I've got 95 frames that I've stacked. And um, at 120 seconds for each frame, that's about three hours of total exposure time. All right. So there's three hours of exposure time. And if I zoom in on this, there's hardly any noise at all. Okay. So we've eliminated a ton of that noise, but I still didn't use calibration frames. And you can still see the center of the picture is pretty bright and the corners are still really dark. Now let me show you when you add those flat frames, those dark frames and those flat darks, this is the picture that you get. Now, there's a lot of processing that still needs to be done. However, you can clearly see it got rid of the illumination in the corners and you can see the nebulosity really standing out now. And you can see all the details in it just from adding those calibration frames. They make a huge difference when you're stacking photos. Now, just to show you what can be done, that's just the initial part is stacking frames. Then you have to process, which you would use. A lot of people would use Photoshop for that. Some people use PixInsight. I use both. But when you go through all that processing after that, this is the photo um, that you can get. So stacking is the way to take your astrophotography game up to the next level. Because when you consider that that's a single frame and that this is 95 frames stacked with calibration frames and processed. It just shows you, um, you know, what's possible. Um, now, processing is one of those things where it takes time to learn and it takes practice. Um, and it's going to take a little bit of research, asking questions from other astrophotographers. Um, but, you know, little after little, once you get the hang of it, your pictures will start to improve and you can make some really awesome photos.